Now, if you want to add non-collinear vectors algebraically, you determine the x and y component of each vector. So you have your resultant over here or your vector over here with a certain angle and a certain magnitude. Now I want to find, in this case, the resultant is r. So you determine the x and y component of each vector. rx, in this case, as you learn, is r cosine theta. ry is r sine theta. So add all the components in the x direction. Then you add all the components in the y direction separately. Then the sums of x and y components are the two components of the resultant vector. To find the magnitude of the resultant vector, you need to use the Pythagorean theorem. And to find the angle, you need to use trigonometric ratio. Let's have an example on that. So you have player A passes the ball to player B. The ball takes 12 meters to reach player B at an angle of 30 degree. So player A and B, so you have a vector going from A to B. We can draw it on a Cartesian. We have X and Y. So the first vector goes from origin on an angle of 30 as the question is telling you. So you can measure 30 degrees here. It's going to the player B and the magnitude is 12 meters. So I can say D1 equals 12 meters. Then player B will pass the ball to player C nine meters away so i know the next vector have a magnitude of nine meters at an angle of 155 degrees so from the right hand side of the x-axis we draw an angle of 155 degrees or you can say from the left side from the left hand side of the x-axis or the negative side of x-axis what is this angle it is 180 which is the whole half circle between the positive x-axis and the minus or the negative x-axis so 180 minus 155 will give you this angle that's a mathematical rule if you remember in your trigonometry so we have 155 here what is the angle here 25 because 180 is the full half circle 180 minus 155 will give you 25 degrees but if 155 works for you that's fine but when you how it's helpful to get this angle because when you want to find the uh, resultant you could need to break down those vectors into um, into x vector and y vector so now we have d1 going angle of 30 what is d1x and what is d1y and let's find as well for d2 d2x and d2y d1x we know it is d1 cosine 30 d1y is d1 sine 30 now here you can see what is the importance of this angle now d2 you can't use this angle you can use the angle next to the x-axis in this case d2x equals minus d2 cosine 25 and dy2 would be minus d2 sine 25 if you find the x direction components that's d1x and d2x let's combine them or add them together then we take the d1y and d2y and add them together if you compensate all the variables then you'll get d1x equals 10.39 meters and d2x will be minus because it's going left direction of x axis while the d1x is to the right direction so in this case d2x minus 8.16 for the y direction d1y equals 6 d2y because y is going up in the positive direction if it was down it will be minus so d2y is positive going up so that's 3.8 meters let's add the x direction components and the y direction components if you want to look at um, how to do that visually then you have this is dx and this is d2x and this is d1x while for dy you have d1y and d2y head to tail mathematically dx equals d1x plus d2x that will give you 2.23 meters and the y direction dy equals d1y plus d2y that's 9.8 meters now we can conclude or summarize our solutions so we had added the dx components and dy components dx components gave us the value of 2.23 and dy 9.8 both of them are positive so that's dx over here and we draw dy over here what is d in this case of course this angle is 90 by the way so using Pythagorean theorem 
d equals square root of dx squared plus dy squared. So to get d of a right triangle, you need to find the square root of the addition of dx squared plus dy squared. That would give you 10 meters. Now to find the angle of d, that was the magnitude. Now what is the angle? I need to find theta. How inclined is it away from the positive x-axis over here? We learned before that tan theta equals opposite over the adjacent and the opposite in this case is dy over the adjacent is dx that's 9.8 over 2.23 that we know that would give you tan theta would be 4.39 and the theta is the tan inverse of 4.39 that will give you 77 degrees magnitude of resultant is 10 meters on an angle of 77 degrees and that will complete the solution of the example. Let's take another example. Use components to determine displacement of a cross country skier who traveled 15 meters on 220 degrees and then 25 meters on 335 degrees, as we see in the figure. So we have the Cartesian that we start with x and y. You always need coordinates to start with to be able to properly represent the vectors in this case. So we take an angle from the x, it will go 220 in this case. Then we start to draw a vector from origin in a magnitude of 15 meters, that would be d1. Then on the head of that vector, we'll draw another one, that is d2. And d2 was, or on an angle of 335, I mean, from the positive x-axis at the tip of the first vector. And that would give you a magnitude of 25 meters with an angle of 335. So D1, 15 as a given with an angle, 220. D2 is 25 meters magnitude on an angle of 335. What is the D? Again, we need to break down each of those components and find the resultants after grouping the X components and the Y components. We add each separately, then we use the Pythagorean theorem then we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of D and we find the angle similar on what we learned before. So we use Rx equals R cosine theta, Ry R sine theta. So we find the X and Y components. So let's take D1. Now we have an angle of 220 for the vector from the positive X. What is this angle? to help us try to solve the problem. Now the angle from the positive x all the way to the body of the vector is 220. But in order to find the components of this vector, it is always a good idea to find the nearest angle to the x-axis. Doesn't matter it's a positive axis or a negative axis. So in this case, we need to find theta here in order to avoid confusion for you, you can see that the author found theta to be 40, but how did he get it as a 40? Let me explain to you. So you have the x and y axes, that's the Cartesian. Now, Cartesian having x and y axes perpendicular to each other, that's known. So that means all these angles are 90 degrees. So in our case, we had an angle of 220 degrees, right? That's 220 degrees as a theta. Now we know this is 90 and we know this is 90, right? Now, if I say there's a 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. Now, if I draw a, a half a circle this way, let's say that's my angle, what would be the angle over here? 90 plus 90, that's 180 degrees, right? Now, if you continue, if I want to know the angle from here all the way to here, what is it? 90 plus 90 plus 90, that's 270 degrees. Now, in my case, if I roll the circle all the way to here, it should be 270 degrees. But I have 220 that reached somewhere in the third quarter of the Cartesian. So 220. But if it reached over here, it will be 270. So I can find this angle 
by subtracting the 270 minus 220 but in the question it was reaching up to here so I can find this angle in this case so what is theta here it is 270 minus 220 that would give me 50 degrees in this case that's this angle this angle is 50 degrees but I need this one but we know this is 90 so if I know this is 50 I can find this by seeing 90 minus 50 would give me 40 degrees and that's what you see over here as a 40 degrees angle we did all that complicated process to be able to find this angle because you know you gotta take the um, x component of d1 and you want to take the y component of d1 so it's always easy to find this angle to be able to easily find the components same thing happened here as an example to you try to figure out in the same concept we use here how did we come up with this angle now let's continue our question so x direction we have d1x equals minus because the component is in the negative direction so d1 x component is d1x equals d1 as magnitude multiplied by cosine theta in this case theta is 40 multiplied by of course it should have negative sign because direction is negative and the y component is going downward so that's negative for the y-axis as well so it equals dy1 equals d1 multiplied by sine theta which is 40 in a negative sign so minus d1 multiplied by cosine 40 for d2 same concept d2x going positive direction d2y going negative direction and we know our theta so we can find that uh, d2x is equal 22.66 meters d1x equals minus 11.49 meters d1y minus 9 d2y minus 10.57 Add the x and y components, dx equals d1x plus d2x will give you 11.17 meters. And dy equals d1y plus d2y will give you minus 20.21 meters. Now we want to find the total d. We draw the components on a Cartesian and we decide what is the value and magnitude of the d. Using Pythagorean theorem, the magnitude of d would be square root of dx squared plus dy squared, which we already know the values for, would give you d magnitude as 23.09 meters. To find the theta of the resultant d, we say tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. In this case, that's your theta. It's always important to decide where is your right theta. So opposite is 20.21 over 11.17. And that would give you 1.8 and the theta will be the tan inverse which is tan inverse of 1.8 will give you 61 degrees now we know that the resultant magnitude 23.09 meters with an angle of 61 degrees 